Hi friends, I'm Dr. Ilyas and welcome to another episode of Suli Surao. Many of my friends have told me that learning ECG is difficult. Actually, learning ECG is not difficult but one should learn to read ECG in a systematic manner. Because even experts in cardiology can make mistakes in ECG if they don't go through ECG systematically. It is easy to label an ECG as abnormal but it is difficult to say that an ECG is normal with confidence. By applying Chamberlain's rules, we can confidently state that an ECG is normal. In this video, I shall explain about the common measurements in ECGs followed by Chamberlain's 10 rules. This picture shows a normal ECG paper consisting of small and large squares. One large square is 5 mm and one small square is 1 mm. The horizontal axis measures time and the vertical axis measures voltage, that means amplitude. At the start of the ECG, you can see a calibration signal with a height of 10 mm which equals 1 mV. You can also see the speed of ECG paper as 25 mm per second. So, in the horizontal axis, 25 mm is equal to 1 second, that is equal to 5 large boxes. So, 5 large square is actually equal to 1 second. So, by applying basic mathematics, you can see that 1 large box is equal to 200 millisecond and 1 small box is equal to 40 millisecond. In the vertical axis, we had already learned that 10 mm is equal to 1 millivolt that is equal to 2 large boxes. Hence, 1 large box is actually equal to 0.5 millivolt which means 1 small box is equal to 0.1 millivolt. Before applying Chamberlain's rules, ensure that the rate of the ECG is normal that is 60 to 100 beat per minute and the rhythm should be in sinus and the QRX axis should be normal that is minus 30 degree to 100 degree. Rule 1 states that the P wave should be upright in leads 1, 2 and V2 to V6. In this ECG we can see that all P waves are upright in these leads. You should also learn that there are other morphologies of P wave which can seen as abnormal finding in these leads like inverted, biphasic, dome and dart, flutter and fibrillary waves. Rule 2 states that PR interval should be 120 to 200 millisecond which corresponds to 3 to 5 small squares. In this ECG we can see that the PR interval is 160 millisecond that is 4 small square. Rule 3 say that there should be no pathological Q waves in leads 1, 2 and V2 to V6. If it is present, it should be less than 40 millisecond. When will you say that Q waves are pathological? If the Q waves are more than 40 millisecond in width, more than 2 millimeter in depth, if it is more than one fourth of the height of QRS, it is abnormal. In this ECG, we can see that all these Q waves are less than 40 millisecond in duration and the height is also not suggestive of pathological. Rule 4 states that QRS complex should be less than 120 millisecond in duration. That is, it should be less than 3 small squares. In this ECG, we can see that the duration is 90 millisecond only. Rule number 5 states that R wave in chest leads should increase from V1 to V4 and S wave should increase from V1 to V3 and it should be disappear in V6. Here we can see that the progressive increase in R and S wave. This is the progression of R wave from V1 to V4. And here also you can see that the R wave is progressively increasing from V1 to V4. And here you can see that the S wave is actually increases from V1 to V2 but you can see that in lead V6 it is disappeared. Rule 6 state that except in lead V1 and lead V2, ST segment should start from isoelectric point. 
and it can be a normal finding in v1 and v2 if it is elevated minimally in this ecg we can see that all st segment started from an isoelectric point even in v1 and v2 rule 7 states that t wave should be upright in leads 1 2 and v2 to v6 we can see that in lead 1 lead 2 lead v2 to v6 t waves are upright rule 8 states that in limb leads the qrs complex and t waves should be concordant here we can see that the qrs and t are concordant rule number 9 states that in lead 1 and lead 2 all waves should be upright in this ecg we can see that all waves in lead 1 and lead 2 are upright coming to rule number 10 it states that in lead avr all waves should be negative in this ecg you can see that all waves are inverted in lead avr these are the 10 rules of chamberlain for a normal ecg in summary p wave should be upright in lead 1 lead 2 and lead v2 to v6 pr interval should be 122 200 millisecond there should not be any pathological q wave in lead 1 lead 2 and lead v2 to v6 if present it should be less than 40 millisecond the qrs complex should be less than 120 millisecond r wave in chest leads should grow from v1 to v4 s wave should grow from v1 to v3 and it should disappear in v6 st segment should start from isoelectric point t wave should be upright in lead 1 lead 2 and lead v2 to v6 qrs complex and t wave should be concordant in limb leads all wave should be upright in lead 1 and lead 2 all wave should be down in lead avr so next time when you read an ecg you can say that the ecg is normal with confidence thank you for watching this video don't forget to share this video and subscribe to this channel